Hey, so now let's move on to the discussion for the next question. That's question number 16. This question also hold three marks. It has two parts. So here we are dealing with the first part of this question, which wants us to draw the equipotential surfaces due to an electric dipole. So here is what you need to draw. So equipotential surface is the surface over which the potential is the same at every point. And you are aware that equipotential surface in the case of electric dipole is drawn in this manner. So this is what is expected from you to draw for this part of the question. This part of the question scores one mark. So when you will draw this diagram neatly and clearly, you are going to score one mark for this part of the question. Now this question is left with two marks and for that you need to answer the second part of the question which wants us to derive an expression for the electric field due to a dipole of dipole moment P at a point on its perpendicular bisector. So for that you can have a look onto this derivation. So basically you need to find out the electric field on the equatorial line of an electric dipole as per this question. Okay. So for that you can clearly see here we are going to take up a point at a distance y from the axial line. So you can see here I have taken up this point P which lies at a distance y from this axial line. This is negative charge, this is a positive charge separated by the small distance 2A. Now here at point P we will be calculating the electric field due to this negative charge as well as due to this positive charge. So what is going to be that? The electric field at point P due to this negative charge is going to be KQ by R square. What is going to be R? R is going to be this distance. Okay. Now here when you will substitute the values K is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. What is the magnitude of the charge? That is Q and what is this distance? That is going to be if this is 2A, this distance is a simply A. And this we have already considered it y. So this will be the square root of a square plus y square. So we need to take the square of this distance. So this will simply be a square plus y square. So we have calculated E that is electric field at point P due to this negative charge. And this electric field is going to be towards this negative charge as you can see it here. Now here we can resolve this electric field into its components and how we can do that you can have a look here. See here if this angle is theta this angle is also theta. So I can resolve it into the components. One is going to be in this direction and one is going to be in this direction. Okay. So this component is going to be E minus Q cos theta. You can see it here. So this is E minus Q cos theta and this downward component is E minus Q sin theta. Okay. So this component is E minus Q cos theta. This is E minus Q sin theta. Further, you can also find out the electric field at point P due to the positive charge. And that is again going to be KQ by R square. K is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. The magnitude of the charge is Q. And this distance is still remains as A square plus Y square. Okay. Now here again the electric field is going to be in this direction. So we can resolve it further into the two components as we did for this E minus Q. And when you will do so, you will be getting the two components, one in this direction and the other one in this direction. So this is going to be the sine component of E plus Q and this is going to be the cos component of E plus Q. So from here or from this explanation, you can clearly see as the magnitude of the electric field exerted on this point P due to the positive as well as due to the negative charge is the same in magnitude. So these two components will get cancelled out with each other and cos component will get added up. So what is going to happen? 
the net electric field at point P is going to be 2 E cos theta and that is going to be in the negative x direction that is why we are getting this as minus I cap ok. Moving further when you will substitute here the value of E because the magnitude is same so you can also write it here as 2 E plus Q ok. So, this will be simply the you need to substitute here the value of this E as well as cos theta and when you will do this you are going to get this expression ok. Further if we consider this dipole to be extremely short in that case this distance between the charges that is the length of the dipole is much less than the distance of the point P from the axial line and hence this equation will become this that is E is equal to minus P 4 pi epsilon naught y cube ok. This negative sign th that you are getting here in this expression indicates that the electric field at point P is in the opposite direction to that of the direction of the dipole moment of the electric dipole ok. So, I am just going to put it into the box. I hope this is clear to you. Now, let me just explain you the marking scheme for this particular part of the question. So, as I have told you earlier this part of the question was for 2 marks. So, half mark you will get when you will calculate E minus Q, half mark you will get when you will calculate E plus Q, half mark you will get when you will explain successfully either by drawing the components on this particular diagram or by writing it there that the sign component of both the electric field at point P will get cancelled out and cos component will get added up as it is in the same direction. So, you can also mention it there in the theoretically or in the writing or you can either show it with the help of these arrows onto the diagram. So, for that you are going to get half mark and the final half mark you will get for this final expression ok. So, I hope this is clear to you. So, this is how you are going to get 2 out of 2 marks for this particular part of the question and 3 out of 3 marks for this question number 16. I hope this discussion is quite clear to you. Now, let us move on to our discussion for the next question.